Hey guys, I'm Aussie Villain, and welcome back to your run on the Impossible Dream. It is a transfer special today as we move from Season 6 into Season 7 and back into the Champions League, albeit we've got to qualify through the non-Champions uh, path, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, first up, we have our uh, our end-of-season awards. Behind me, you can see the overall uh, the, the sort of best uh, team of the series with Noah Skoko uh, being inducted into that uh, along with Palumbo, Bozniak and Pembele. So well done to those guys. Off we go to the end of season awards and then uh, we'll let the transfers begin. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Yarun end of season awards. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to the Yeroen End of Season Awards. And I guess sometimes a decent season feels like a failure, and that's, I think, how certainly how I feel this season. You know, ultimately, we've won the Cup, European semi-final, second in the league, back in the Champions League. That's not a bad season, but, uh, yeah, we should have gone better in Europe, shouldn't we? I really feel like there was a final there for us. But anyway, the boys have put in a really, really good effort. It's not their fault they're not good enough. So, uh, well done, lads, and we'll uh, go again next season. So, the first award this evening is the Golden Pen for this season, signing of the year. And I've got to say, this guy was a little bit of a Hail Mary. I talked him up. I, th I said he was going to be a success. Ultimately, I wasn't too sure. But he's uh, been better than I could ever have hoped. So, congratulations. The Golden Pen goes to Nasia Akbasli. The next award is the Golden Card, awarded to the player with the worst discipline. Now, I believe this is also a club record, so very well done, very well done. And uh, this is someone that in the dressing room we need to lead from the front, and he's certainly doing that. So with one red card, eight yellows, congratulations goes to Tommy Santiago. The next award is the Golden Spoon, awarded to the player who feeds the strikers and has given the most assists. And on this occasion, it's uh, ironic because this guy also apparently wants a silver spoon, chasing the big bucks and refusing to sign a new contract. So with 15 assists and a contract offer still on the table, congratulations, Timothy Pambele. The next award is the Golden Anchor, awarded to the man who we can rely on, the player with the highest average match rating. And uh, this guy is, uh, well, I just pretty much uh, slated him and praised him in the same breath. So I hope he hasn't taken his seat yet with an average match rating of 7.49 and a contract offer, Timothy Pembele. The next award is the Golden Cross, awarded by the medical department to the player who has been injured the most this season. And this guy hasn't been out of the academy for long, but he's certainly proven himself to be uh, a bit of a sick note, to be honest. Right up there, elite level injuries. And uh, yeah, so well done. I think it could be many times that this uh, this, this player wins this award. Missing 21% of the season. Congratulations, Gary Turpich. <laughs> The next award is the Golden Soother, awarded to the baby of the team, this season's best young player. And we've already seen this guy on the stage this evening, and he is definitely one of our better players, never mind young players. So congratulations, the Golden Soother goes to Nasia Akbasli. Now it is time for one of the big ones. It is the Golden Boot for this season's top goal scorer. And this guy just, he's just missed the consistency. 20 goals a season in, season out. 21 this season. So a big congratulations goes to Golden Boot winner, Elias Fillet. Now it is time to award the horse's ass for this season's worst player. And, uh, well, for making us wait so long to play a stupid goal celebration song that wasn't even that good. I think we can all agree on that. The quality of it was poor. I thought it was going to be much better. But uh, Noah Skoko, congratulations, mate. You are the horse's ass. Next up, it is an award that is just everything to everybody at this club. It is the Viewers Player of the Year. I want to thank everybody who took the time to nominate and then vote for your uh, Viewers Player of the Year. And I can tell you... With well over 50% of the vote, the winner is Elias Fillet. 
Now, before we get to announcing this season's player of the season, we do need to acknowledge the team of the year. So if you just direct your eyes up to the board, you will see the goalkeeper is, of course, Ayasa. Your back four is Brocalo, Damjanic, Williams and Pambele. Sit hole sits in the hole. Uh, we've got Kakavenga and Palumbo in midfield. And then Skoko in behind Akbasli and Fillet. Pretty much nailed that, haven't they? Well done, everybody. Brilliant season for all of you. Just uh, score when we ask you to, please, Skoko. And now it is time for the big one. It is time for the Golden Star for this season's best player. And, uh, well, I think we've seen most of the best players on the stage tonight. But this guy, and I'm glad he gets something out of the season because he has been spectacular. And he has scored some very big, very important goals, and particularly in the league, that really did help us get uh, back into the Champions League. So, without any further ado, the Golden Star goes to Martin Palumbo. So there we go. Congratulations to Martin and the rest of the winners this evening. Uh, like I say, disappointing was sort of the feeling for a successful season but uh, we go again transfer window is uh, just around the corner and uh, we need to do some strengthening I think so uh, we'll do it we'll be back bigger and better next year hopefully stronger and I look forward to seeing you all there so thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening thank you everybody thank you very much thank you so end of season awards are done. Let's have a look and a quick review of uh, the season that was before we move on to the transfers. Uh, so Borchman was, no, Akbarsley was uh, signing of the season. So well done to him as C. Reese Williams was brilliant for us. I thought he's uh, only a B minus. Visenton, B minus. Triantis, a B plus. That's maybe a little bit surprising. Uh, Sithole was a B minus. He was quite good. Ayasa wasn't quite the goalkeeper I was hoping he would be, but let's hope he does better next season. Uh, Borchman, a B minus. And then a couple of youngsters uh, that came in as uh, sort of just options and uh, or future maybe uh now we did sell some players didn't we so Nasevic uh went off and played in the middle east uh hartman went off to that's spain isn't it did okay ish bakenic in italy did okay ish Persa in france did okay dundon jack we might see him again slavin balupo did end up uh, winning the playoffs so they are still in the league uh havoy only two sub appearances which is probably disappointing for him Messick. Uh, we'll see him more. He's still around. And anybody else here who was a bit of a player for us? Trigrenic went to Austria, played some games. Uh, da, da, who's that? Dashka. Mostly a bench player for Leon, which surprises me a little bit. And Islamovic didn't really play, which doesn't particularly surprise me. Uh, all right, so B- minus for the league. Just about fair enough that I'd say maybe a B, a B minus is maybe a little harsh. We did come second. The Conference League, it was all going so well. It was all going so well, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, so that's that. And then the Cup, of course, we did manage to win that, which is uh, very, very nice, convincingly, in the final as well. Moments to remember. So the biggest win was the 6-0. That's early rounds of qualifying, that one, wasn't it? The, the, oh, that, that win against Lazio was the match to remember. That was something, wasn't it? Although, in hindsight, as it turned out, uh, Lazio, maybe not the team we thought they were. And goal of the season, as voted by the game, um, was uh, was the Kakavenga strike. Now we have, uh, you will still have the chance to vote, and I'll leave the link for that down. Well, actually, well, you won't, won't see the goals again. But anyway, uh, I'll give you a chance to vote for that, and then I'll announce the winner hopefully uh, in the first episode of next season. And uh, let's have a look here. We are still a three-star reputation team. Uh, finances, we lost a, not quite as much competition prize money, but that's probably not being in the Champions League, isn't it? Um, so uh, we sold some shirts. Fillet was number one. Then Vicentin, Palumbo, Kakavenga, and Matanovic as the most popular ones. Team of the season, uh, I'm going to say that that is more or less fair enough. Rovis at uh, left back might have, or left wing back might have a bit of a, a issue with that. I'd say that performance-wise, they were maybe quite even. I prefer Rovis, but Brocalo did well when he played. So, yeah, that's all just about fair enough, I'd say. Uh, the accolades. So, Palumbo was the Fans Player of the Year. Akbasli was the Young Player of the Year. Uh, and also the signing of the season. Uh, goal of the season, of course, we will vote our own one. We had uh, Philip as the Golden Boot. We had uh, Pembele as uh, the Golden Spoon. Rovis was uh, most player of the match awards. We don't give that out on the night, of course. Pembele uh, was the golden anchor. And uh, another word we don't give out anymore, but Damjanic was uh, the most passes completed. 
for records. Pembele's 15 assists was a club record. Santiago, well done. Goal card and a uh, club record. Uh, then most goals, lead goals by a player. So an overall record, that one for Phillip. Youngest player and goal scorer as well, yeah, for uh, for Siraj. And then the largest transfer fee was Dashka heading off. So that is, uh, that is that all. Very, very exciting. Let's go do some transfers. Now, let's start with what we know is already happening. As a reminder, Nemanja Tosic is coming in. Uh, two, uh, sorry, 3.2 million. Very, very good young centre-back. Excited to be getting him on board. And the other one that we know is happening uh, on a free transfer is Yenis uh, Hamache. Uh, he is a attacking left-back. Good crosser, good free kick. And uh, a little bit older than ideally we'd like to sign players for. But let's hope he settles quickly and uh, and learns a language quickly and um, yeah becomes a, a very important part of us particularly getting forward down that left hand side so that's what we've done there's a lot that we want to do yet and uh, it's you know it's already May 27th we usually start the season in early July so um, yeah I've got about what about a month and a bit to do stuff so uh, I better get to it all right, we have our first signing of the window, and it is another left back, which means we have too many left backs. Honestly, I think I'm just going to try and sell Rovis and Bracalo, try and maximize what we can get for them. Uh, we picked up David Della Vibora, which is a pretty good name. He had a, uh, an active release fee of uh, 575000 so we triggered that. It, it kind of made sense. So uh, he's on uh, seven and a half grand a week as a squad player, which is good because that means he's not going to necessarily expect to play every game. And this is what we've got. He is kind of a little bit, it reminds me a little bit of Bracalo. He's just a little bit better physically, um, roughly the same technically, but mentally he is uh, he is far beyond whatever we've got at left back. So really, really pleased with that. I mean, at a stretch, he could almost go into the middle and play as a, as a midfielder because he's got the vision, the passing, the work rate, um, you know, the tackling as well, determination. There would be a defensive midfielder in there if we were desperate for it. The obvious weakness is jumping reach. Uh, he's only a little fella. And uh, but that should be okay because we're using him more as a wing back than a full back, so he shouldn't need to do too much, um, too much defending in a back post necessarily. So that's what we've got his career to date. And if you missed it, he's a 26 year old Spanish uh, player. So he started off at Real Madrid uh, and then has eventually found his way to uh, Castellon and uh, Granada and then uh, Regina in Italy, bought him for half a million. So they're making a small profit on him. He's played uh, mostly Serie B with them. And uh, particularly this last season did well. So again, we need him to come in, settle quickly, and uh, he should do well for us. All right, so the European uh, updates for standings and whatnot, coefficient points is in. So the league has moved up five places to 11th now, which is excellent to see us moving up. Uh, Jeroen has moved up 46 places already, 64th in Europe. Goas, we're going very, very well on that front, and uh, going to a semi-final does help that, doesn't it? So England and Spain are the two coefficient uh, teams for the next season. Uh, homegrown players for this coming season, uh, we should be okay on that front. And uh, Croatia is on the rise. So there is now a uh, Europa League. Uh, so it's just moved up from a playoff into... So we've moved up three places to 11th. The Europa League third playoff uh, round is now just the playoff, which doesn't really affect us. And the Conference League places, it is one team and it was two. So that doesn't make sense that you would lose a place if you've moved up the rankings, does it? I feel like I've missed something there. But anyway... Um, that's uh, that's happened. That's confused me. All right, the transfer window has opened, which means our two new signings have arrived, and we officially have our first wonder kid. Tosic arrives as a wonder kid, and uh, it's, uh, that's going to be three point two million. Very very well spent, I think and hope. And uh, the. Vibora, again, I, I don't regret signing him at all. Uh, the one caveat to that will be if we can't get rid of <laughs> the other guys, we're going to have four left backs, and that's. That's probably at least one too many. So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. But well done. I'm very happy with myself. We have a wonder kid at the club, the first one. I thought maybe Siraj might be the first one, but nope, it's Tosic. So we have the draw for the second qualifying round. This is very, very early. I'm slightly concerned this might be a very short transfer special. Uh, we are there. We are a seeded team. We're going to draw one of these three. Uh, and I don't think it really matters who we get, does it? AK, so that's them. This is the Czech side. So we're facing a Czech side. Rangers have got Vyborg, and uh, that is the lead path for the first qualifying round. I don't know when that starts, but hopefully it's not too soon. <laughs> 
So it starts the 25th of July. That's fine. That's fine. We've got over a month. All right, we are at July 1st, which means contracts are expired, which also means we have our other new left back, Yenis Hamache, uh, 29 years old, as we saw at the top. Uh, another squad player. I'm hopeful he's going to do well. It's going to depend a lot on how quickly he settles. Hopefully, it'll be nice and quick. And, um, yeah, I mean, a free kick taking of seven, uh, 20, uh, 17 uh, and crossing as well. I think he'll do well. I really, really do. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Now, there's uh, a few things that I'm looking to do. We're looking to do a little bit of a squad clear out as well. Um, I have been getting rid of a few of the... Um uh, what are they called? Like the, the academy graduates that aren't really good enough. If we look at player contracts that are, that are uh, looking to be expired, and these are some guys that we're looking to cash in on before that. Uh, Rovis, Damjanic, Pembele, but because he's refusing to negotiate a new deal. Uh, Dekic, I'm holding off on because I want to make sure that it, we'll sort Pembele out first and make sure we don't leave ourselves super short there. Uh, and you can see that uh, Lovrich, we've offered a new deal to, as we have with Bekenic, who I'm probably going to send out on loan this year. And Nova who was one of the uh, yeah, good young uh, players at the club as well. So, yeah, we'll see. We're going to keep Rakic as well. We're just having a little bit of a negotiation issue there on how much he's worth, but uh, we'll sort that out. Don't worry. Look, ideally, we wouldn't have to make this signing, but uh, Pembele seems insistent on being a pain in the ass and not signing a new deal. So we've kind of had our hand forced. We've had to make the signing. How do you say this guy's name? We've had to sign this guy anyway. So we have a signing, it is a, another right back with Pembele's contract, not really looking like it's going to get itself sorted, it looks like we're going to be forced to sell him to cash in, uh, so we've gone and replaced him before we've done that, and it is uh, a due, no idea how you say that, he is a 26 year old French fullback, uh, we signed him from uh, that team. Lub uh, Lubana, I think they're Slovenian, aren't they? Uh, he's on just under six grand a week as a squad player, which is a good deal for us because, again, it means he's not going to be uh, too upset if he's not playing. This is what he is. He's not Pembele, but he's not far away. I think that is probably the nicest thing we can say about him. Um, he's got a good jumping reach, which I don't think Pembele necessarily has. Uh, but he's going to get forward okay. He's got decent work rate. He's well-rounded. I think a million pounds is about right for him. And if you have a look at his career to date, came through at Ren and uh, never really established himself there. A little bit playing in league. Uh, went to uh, yeah the Slovenian side, has played in their top flight for two seasons. and uh, And now we've got him. So, uh, yeah, like I say, we're going to make a profit on the fact that Pembele is coming out, going out. This guy's coming in and uh, let's hope he's, he's maybe not half as good, but three quarters as good. Look, no one wanted this deal to happen except for, uh, you know, Pem Biggie Bucks. So, uh, you know, to get a £7 million fee is, uh, it's not bad from our point of view. So, sorry, one sec. Hello? I'm in the middle of a press conference. Uh, yes, I injured. Shit, for how long? I don't have a backup. Oh, he doesn't count. He's hopeless. So there we go. There is a lot to catch you up on. We are actually at game day of our first game of the season, but uh, there's so much has happened. Uh, so uh, Timothy Pembele, unfortunately, has left 5.75 up front, going up to 7 million if he pays 20 games at Udinese. Uh, and he's there as an important player. So you would imagine, uh, unless there's serious injuries involved, he will play those 20 games. So not what we wanted to do, but if he's not going to sign a new contract... We better to get seven million than nothing, aren't we? So that has happened. Now the other thing that has happened while we're on signings is we have signed Sergio Roberto. Now he is a 21-year-old. He was, uh, yeah, he's a free transfer. He was at Napoli. Now don't get super excited. Is a good way to <laughs> to uh, bring up a signing, isn't it? Don't get excited. We only signed him as a future prospect, the grand a week, uh, and we only signed him, to be honest, because he was a free transfer. But let's have a look at him. He is a right-sided winger. Now, we have got two promising left-sided wingers at the club, uh, sort of 16, maybe 17, 15, so like, you know, like young, young wingers. So I wanted to have an option. They're both left-footed. So I wanted to have an option to, to just to trial wingers, maybe in a cup game or something like that. So... That's the reason that I bought him in. So we're going to see what we get. And uh, it was the, the the cheapest option for someone who could actually, if we use him and he does well, have a little bit of, of resale value for us as well. So he's not the worst, certainly not the best. Uh, and he's here. And I'll show you the other two guys uh, before we end the episode. But he's here basically to give them a chance to show, to show what they can do. Uh, now, on the injury front, 
So on the injury news, it's not good news. It is Ayasa. It is uh, a damaged shoulder. It is five days to two weeks. Now that is coming down. Initially, it was four to five weeks. It's been out for about a week already. So physios are getting to work and doing a good job on him. Uh, the problem is that we have Champions League qualifiers in about four days' time. And we don't have... We have Sakanji, basically, to go and go for us. Now, I did look at trying to bring somebody else in. It would have been millions of pounds. Um you know, to because clubs weren't just going to loan someone uh, without us having to pay a loan fee and wages. Uh, and we didn't, I didn't really want to sign anybody that was not better than Ayasa, which we couldn't do. So we're just going to keep our fingers crossed that it's fine and he's back in five days. But needless to say, uh, piss poor timing <laughs> on the injury, that is for sure. Uh, so that is everything uh, in terms of signings that have been uh, been happening. Let's have a look at the squad we have to start the season. And as ever, it's always it's always a lot more going on. The season just starts a little bit too early for us. Uh, but in terms of goalkeepers, uh, Ayasa and Sakanji, for now, we'll try and get somebody else in. We do actually have uh, a couple of decent youngsters. I think this is the guy that we played into yeah, in a game last year. So there's a little bit of potential there for him. Um, so we'll see. I mean, these guys aren't going to be first choice at all this season. So we, don't, we ideally... We'd like somebody else. I just don't know who that's going to be yet. If we go and have a look at centre-backs. So uh, we have our wonder kid, Nemanja Tosic. Really, really excited for him. Uh, Reese Williams, I think they'll both be uh, the first choices. We've got uh, St. Iago, uh, model citizen and uh, very, very solid. We've got Triantis, uh, who is, again, squad player and happy to do that, which is good. We've got Borchman. Now, Borchman, I'm going to try and send out on loan, ideally, to get him a season of playing football regularly. We've got Benick, who is our... Uh, so certainly, he's only a young centre-back now. He's been a promising centre-back, though. He's a promising centre-back, so we'll see what we do with him. Messick was out on loan last year and is back. I have my doubts that he's going to make it with us, but I want to give him a chance. If I can get him sent out on loan... Again, to play as a centre-back. I think last year he was, he was as a full-back, uh, and he's not a full-back. So if I can get him out on loan again as a centre-back, I'll do that. If not, we might just try and give him some game time. Uh, we've got uh, Kondrick. I want I want to send him out on loan, but I also want to mentor his personality a little bit more if I can. So, uh, Torn, what to do with him. And then we've got uh, we've got down here Demjanic, who we're trying to sell. If we can't sell him, it's not the end of the world. He's just He hasn't developed at all as much as I would have liked. And um, so we're hopefully going to move him on. And uh, the other option we have is uh, is Dewey, who we just signed as uh, as Pembele's uh, replacement. He could play centre-back if we needed him to as well. Uh, so we might as well go and have a look at the right-backs that are left at the club. So Dewey is uh, probably first choice. Just about with Dekic. Uh, you can see there's interest in him. I don't want to sell him now until we get somebody else that, that we, you know, we know is coming in. And we've got to be a little bit careful with uh, our homegrown players in the Champions League squad as well. So he's, he sort of fulfills two roles there for us. And the other one that's going to be uh, a big part of what we do in terms of uh, getting game time is uh, Sven Hersevic. Now, he was out on loan at Bordeaux last year, our affiliate team. Now, they got promoted again, so they're in the top flight, which is both a bit of a curse and a blessing uh, in terms of sending players out on loan. But he is uh, he is developing not too badly, so we'll see what we get out of him. Over on the left-hand side, now, Rovis, you'll see we've accepted a bid for him. It looks like he's leaving Bracalo again as well. We're trying to actively get him out. And uh, Dusanich as well. We're trying to get... I've got a little bit for him. Yeah, to Maribor. So our two guys for now will be Hamache and will be uh, Del uh, Vibora, the two new guys. We do, again, have one or two youngsters that could fill in as a third choice. So, yeah, we'll see what we get from that. Uh, defensive midfielder. Uh, so Sithole is obviously our guy in this position, isn't he? He is just very, very good. Uh, Brigic is uh, continuing to look like he's going to be a decent player for us. And again, fulfills uh, squad requirements. Bosniak can play back here at a stretch, though I increasingly prefer him further forward. Santiago could play here. Uh, we've got this youngster, Novak, who's developing nicely. Another one I might look to send out on loan. Um... But I'd want to, ideally, I think I want him playing in the second tier 
all as a as a regular starter, and I don't know that we'll be able to to get that for him. Uh, and then there's one or two others here that can play that position if we need them to. A little bit further forward in midfield, Kakavenga is still around. He's happy to be at the club right now as a squad player as well, so that's good. Bosniak, uh, this is I prefer him a little bit further forward here. Uh, Noah Skoko, I prefer him a little bit further forward again, but he can play here if we need him to. Palumbo uh, is still around even though he's wanted. Hopefully that will stay the same. Ormarkic showed signs last year that he was going to be a useful player for us. So uh, he's uh, he's still around. Our young, the great hope, Sakanji. Uh, yeah, I think I've been playing him a little bit deeper in midfield uh, in, in pre-season. And he's done really, really well. So I'm hoping that uh, he'll continue that. Uh, and then this is another youngster that's come through as 16 to able to play now as well is Sven Bassar. And uh, doesn't have the passing or the teamwork, ideally, that you'd like. Um, but we'll see what we get out of him. And uh, we might give him some game time off the bench in games that are going well for us. If we go to the number 10, as I said, uh, Skoko, Sakanji. Uh, Lovric is another one that is in this position. Another one that I'd like to loan out, ideally to the second tier. But I don't know if we're going to be able to get him uh, the game time that he would need there. And also, I want to try and... I want to try and fix the personality if I can as well. Uh, and then that is that. So if we go forward to strikers, Philip is uh, still just Mr. Reliable for us, isn't he? Matanovic, he is wanted. Not sure if we'll sell him or not yet. Uh, Visington is, uh, is I think, going to have a good year for us this season. Uh, then we've got Akbasli, who should be good. And uh, Turpic as well, who is uh, looking like a, a top flight player now. And uh, we've also got one or two other youngsters. We've got uh, Ruka Vina. And we've also got uh, this guy, only 15. He doesn't turn uh, 16 till November, so halfway through the year. But another one, another promising young striker we've got at the club. Uh, now, you'll notice there's a few names there that are perhaps missing that you would have expected to see. Those are in transfers out. And uh, one or two of them have gone out on loan. So we did manage to loan out Rakic. Uh, so he's going to be playing top flight football with Burdo. That's really, really good. Hopefully it's going to benefit him. I wouldn't mind doing the same thing with Turpich perhaps, but we'll see what we get uh, with that. And the other one that's gone out on loan is this guy, a young winger, not one of the two that is uh, particularly good, but I want to get this guy out on loan and just see what he could do. Um, so those guys have left. Then there's a few that have left. Now it says they're free transfers. Most of these guys have a 50% sell on. So uh, this was a young right winger that's not going to make it. But is is that not the worst? So he's gone off to second tier side. Uh, Luca, this is a defensive midfielder. Yep. So he's gone off to Oziak with a fifty percent sell on. Uh, this is the guy that was playing a little bit of right back for us last year. Unambitious is holding him back, I think. So he's gone off to Sabala with a fifty percent sell on. Uh, we've got this guy going out to Istra. Can't remember if there's a sell on for him or not, but one of our young centre backs. Uh, another one to Savala was uh, was uh, Makovic. Now he was actually on loan last year with Bordeaux. Um, did okay you know, in a promotion side was playing, but again, 50% sell on for him. And uh, the other one that we've let go is uh, Kernich. Now we did see him a little bit in our first team. Was okay. The fickle personality was a problem, and we've got uh, so many good young strikers that we uh, we just cashed in on him in a 50% sell-on for him as well. So that is that. Now, the two young wingers that we have. The first one is this guy, Dorjan uh, Tomasek. Now, he is uh, valued up to almost $8 million. There's a part of me that just wants to cash in on him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and go from there. Now, a couple of thoughts that I have is that uh, we could perhaps use him as a as a in, inside forward or inverted wing up because he's left footed but doesn't really cross or dribble anyway. So he might be that he's a little bit more of a striker, perhaps doesn't really have the composure. So yeah, I just want to I want to give him a chance basically to play on the wing and see what he can do. And the other one we've got here is uh, is it this guy? Is this the yeah? Is this guy? So he, again, now he can dribble and cross, maybe doesn't have the finishing. So he is down the left with a cross in. And uh, yeah, he's only 15 now, so he won't be able to play this season. But uh, actually, no, he's at the 6th of August, or is that the uh, the 8th of June that he's going to turn six? So maybe he will be able to play if his birthday's in August. Um, so yeah, so that will be, uh, that'll be good to see just what they can do, basically. So that's, uh, that's why we've done that. But... So that brings us to the end of the episode. Hopefully it's not been too long. Uh, we can see that we start away to Oziak in the league, which is going to be interesting. Uh, one or two games have already taken place. And uh, I'm 
cautiously optimistic. Like I say, there's still a lot more that is going to happen, but uh, the, the window just comes around so quickly. It's, uh, or the, the season, I should say, it's difficult to get things done. Uh, we still have, with the Pembele sale, 80 million to spend. We're over our wage budget, but we can obviously take money out of the transfer budget for that. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a few more sales coming and, well, coming and going in the probably next episode as well. So I'll see you for that one. Until then, take care.